Well, welcome fellow recovering traditionalists to episode 150, a quick math story problem activity. Before I start this episode, I'm going to read a positive comment. With all the negativity in the world, it's nice to hear nice things. So thank you for doing all that you do out there to build math minds and for sharing what you're doing with me. When I get emails and comments on the YouTube channel that are thank yous or just letting me know what you've used from a video or a resource of mine, it always brightens my day. If anything that I've done has helped you and your students out, please email us or comment on the YouTube. The email is info at buildmathminds.com. This week's positivity comes from Amanda. We homeschool and my five-year-old was struggling with counting on until we did this worksheet one time. One time was all it took for it to click for her. What a great tool. This message came in reference to the number of the day worksheet templates that I have. If you don't have them yet, it's a free download that you can request over at buildmathminds.com slash number dash of dash the dash day dash activities. I know that's a long one. So instead, just remember to go to buildmathminds.com slash 150 because we're on episode 150 and I'll link up everything that I mention in this episode. Welcome to Build Math Minds, the podcast where fidelity to your students is greater than fidelity to your textbook. I'm your host, Christina Tonnevold, the recovering traditionalist and buildmathminds.com founder, where my mission is to change the way we teach elementary math to our kiddos. So are you ready to start building math minds and not just creating calculators? Let's get started. In this week's episode, I'm giving you a quick activity you can do to see just how well your students understand the math operations and story problems. In the book, Taking Action, Implementing Effective Teaching Practices by Deanne Hanker and Victoria Bill, I learned the term reverse directionality and how it's used in math. Once they explained it, I knew what it was, but I'd never heard it called that. On page 133, they write, in the past, he did not place much emphasis on contextual or visual representations, but now they play a central role in his teaching. One approach he often uses is to reverse directionality. He explained, I asked students to create a context that would fit the number problem. Oftentimes this will cue me into whether or not the student understands the operation or is just trying to memorize a procedure. For example, he recently asked his students to tell a story to match five minus two thirds, and then to show a picture of the situation. Well, typically in our textbooks, they give the contextual situation and often show a picture that goes with it. Then it asks the students to write the equation and solve it. So instead, give the students the equation and ask them to write the contextual problem for that equation. And you can also have them create a picture for the problem. In the book, they show a picture of two students' work on the five minus two thirds equation. And I'll share that over in the YouTube video at youtube.com slash buildmathminds if you'd like to see it. Or it's also gonna be on the podcast page, which is buildmathminds.com slash 150. So that's also where I share all the links to any resources I mentioned here on the podcast. So in these, images of the two student work examples that they share, it really showed that it is important to have the students do both the story problem and the picture because sometimes kids understand how to solve the problem, but they don't know how to write it correctly in their story problem. For the five minus two thirds, the picture of Selena's work had written the story problem correctly by saying two thirds of one candy but Molly had written two thirds of the cookies in her problem. However, in Molly's picture, you can see she actually only took two thirds of one cookie. She just didn't write it that way. So if you just went off the story problem she wrote, you would think she doesn't understand what it means to subtract two thirds from five. But in her picture, you can see she actually does. 
Solving an equation, writing a story problem, and drawing a visual representation of the problem are all different and unique skills and understandings. None of them show a full picture of a child's understanding of the problem, so it is important to give students opportunities to do all three. For a quick word problem activity, just give your students an equation and ask them to write the story problem. They don't solve it at all. All they need to do is create a contextual problem for that equation. And then if you wanna add another layer to it, you can have them create a picture to go along with their story. If you'd like links to the number of the day template and the book I reference in this episode, you can find them all at buildmathminds.com slash 150. If you do this activity with your students, come on over to this episode's video on my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash buildmathminds and let me know in the comments how it went. Until next week, my fellow recovering traditionalists, keep building math minds.